What is going on? My name is Psyche and welcome back to Dead Cells. Today I'm going to be playing some survival because I believe it's been a while since we played green. And this time around I'm going to be featuring one of the weapons introduced in the Bat C DLC and that is the Rhythm and Bazooki. Which in my opinion has a really uh, interesting playstyle which you will definitely see later. So another day another Dead Cells run. This time around as always starting out in the prisoners quarters. Some people have argued that there might be an alternate floor to the prisoners quarters, but I honestly don't think that's a very good idea considering this is the starting point for every single run. And yeah, I get it. It gets old after you see it like a hundred times, but I don't think it's that bad considering it's one of the shortest biomes in the game. If they did introduce an alternate floor for the prisoners quarters, then I probably wouldn't be too against it. It's just that I don't really see how you can actually implement that considering you would have to change the starting area as well. But uh, just breezing through the biome with the shovel, which is not something I pick up very often. Um, I definitely think shovel can kind of work as a secondary weapon, but uh, as you can see, the damage is just not very good. But um, since it's just the beginning of the game, it doesn't really matter too much. I'm not really worried too much about getting the best items in the beginning, and I don't think you should as well. Even at 5 BC, just find whatever works in the earlier biomes, and honestly, you should be fine. But uh, I wasn't too sure what I was going to go for in this build. I think I was going for an Impaler build, which I'm definitely going to try out in some future run. Because it seems to be a very, very interesting weapon. But uh, of course, right now, just do some parries. Wasn't sure which build I was going for, so I just picked up Gastronomy. It's just a very good mutation. I've talked about this numerous times already, so it's not really a big surprise. I've been getting some questions about the guides I'm going to do next. So by this point, I think it was last week, um, I would have published the 4BC tips guide so I just have two more guides planned for the game and that's pretty much it one of them is every single boss guide so I'm gonna do a video where I do a guide on every single boss in the game with timestamps of course which I've been getting a lot of requests for the only reason I'm doing it this late is because I wanted to cover the 5BC boss as well since I don't think I've ever seen a boss guide on that on YouTube and the other one I plan to do is a malaise guide, which again, I've not seen a malaise guide on the updated version, which is the malaise starting from 2.1 of the game. I definitely think it needs to getting used to. Um, it's very similar to the, uh, the mechanic from Risk of Rain. I don't know if anyone's played that game. Uh, it's not my favorite game of all time, but it is a very interesting mechanic that I've never really seen before in games. But a good thing I picked up a shield in the beginning of the game, just landing some parries and move on to the Corrupted Prison. I do think this is one of the more dangerous biomes in the game though. Now with just 2.4 on the horizon, I wanted to do a new series where I kind of go over community suggestions on different buffs and nerf ideas of Dead Cells because I've been pretty active on the official Dead Cells Discord server and there's a tab on there called Suggestions where anyone can just go there Leave a suggestion if you have a, an idea, like a new weapon or a mutation as well as a buff or nerf idea, you can do it. You can just put it on there and sometimes the devs actually listen to it. Which I believe is what most of the community suggestions on the patch notes refer to. So it's really nice knowing that the devs actually listen to us. But I was thinking of doing a new series where I kind of just go over some of the uh, ideas, the suggestions on there that I think can be pretty interesting. It's not going to be too long, I don't think it's going to be above like 20 minutes per video, but I just wanted something to do before 2.4 comes out, which I believe will, will be here very soon. And I think the idea of having new suggestions tie into the idea that when you're running a gaming channel, you really need a meta to survive. Now, Dead Cells is getting updated pretty regularly, and I can appreciate the devs for that, but it's no online game. Um, there is, is a finite... There is a finite amount of content that you can go through. Once you go through it all, then you're done. But you look at a lot of other channels that cover online games, like, I don't know, Apex Legends, Genshin Impact. Because online games are changing all the time, it's always following a new meta. And I think that's how those gaming channels are able to thrive. And I'm trying to attempt the same, but with Dead Cells, which is proving to be pretty difficult, I think. But uh, look at that, 5 minutes in and we're already in the ancient sewers, so it looks like I'm actually skipping pretty far ahead in this run so far. 
but I just wanted to hurry it up until I got the Rhythm and Bazooki since it is the highlight of this run. Um, I did pick up Tonic, which I don't pick up very often, but since I see myself taking a lot of damage, I thought it might be interesting to check it out. So one other series I wanted to kind of start and look at is um, viewer submitted runs, because I on the Discord server, at least my channel Discord server, um, I had this one viewer that sent me a link to a Google Drive, and then I just gave out some pointers on what they did throughout the run that could have been improved. And I thought that might be kind of interesting, but doing it as a YouTube video instead. Because I think learning from mistakes is a huge part of growing as a Dead Cells player. Um, this is definitely one of those games where it's so punishing, a single mistake can spell out the end of a run. And I really think pointing out those mistakes will help people improve. And I think that's what helped me improve when I was stuck with the game, actually. There are a lot of small, subtle nuances to this game where if you're just playing it casually, then you wouldn't really realize it. Such as moving into a crowd of enemies when you clearly don't have to, especially at 4 BC since enemies teleport to you, you really don't want to be in a tricky situation. I was talking about metas in video games earlier, and one of the reasons why I definitely prefer single player games is that you get to choose the pace that you want to go. Um, a lot of online games like Apex Legends, well actually pretty much every single online game these days, um, have these uh, daily login rewards where you have to play for a couple hours every single day and then it kind of maximizes the rewards you can get. I honestly don't like that system since it's always pressuring you to come back every single day whereas with Dead Cells where a lot of indie games, I can just, you know, go in, play a couple of runs and then be done with it. I don't have to play for every single day for an hour just so I can keep up with like the daily rewards. And it really goes into the psychological side of things where you, it's the system where it has this FOMO effect as in fear of missing out. I'm sure a lot of these games are good games, it's just that I don't want to invest myself a lot into them because I know I'll get stuck in that loop where I'm just, if I don't log in for a day, I won't be content with myself because I'm, I know that I'm missing out on some rewards. The other thing obviously is microtransactions. Nobody likes them. I mean, have you seen some of the prices for skins in some video games? It's crazy. I remember there was once I played Hearthstone and then one of the skins literally costed 10 bucks. Are you really gonna pay 10 bucks for a gift file? Like, come on. Whereas in Dead Cells, you just unlock it and you get it forever, which is perfect. And plus there is mod support, so you can really get away with a lot of funny uh, costumes. It's a single player game, so your game, your rules. But anyways, in this conjunctivious fight, I'm actually really surprised I haven't been hit yet. Though I do have the Thunder Shield, which is probably one of the best shields in the game. Though sadly, it is unlocked under a 5BC requirement. But anyways, I am actually really surprised I managed to no-hit Conjunctivius, considering that the Rhythm and Bazooki is a very, very slow weapon. But I think one of the major things that makes it so good is because of its long range. As if you can actually keep the combo going on the Rhythm and Bazooki, it does massive damage. And I believe at one point its range was actually nerfed because it was just so overpowered. Now, I believe this was like 3 months ago, but on my 2.1 tier list, I did rate Rhythm and Bazooki an S tier weapon. And I think this is one of those weapons where dual binding it with ice shards actually does not work. So you cannot cheat with it, basically. And I'm to the point where I'm done dual binding ice shards with anything. Because I think when you do that, it just makes the game really one dimensional. So I've done a build where I dual binded ice shards with Rodsword. And I got a lot of uh, comments saying how to help them beat the game. And I'm thankful for that. But the thing is though, it's hard to call that a broadsword weapon when it's clearly ice shards that's doing most of the legwork. Because you can dual bind ice shards with a lot of weapons, such as the symmetrical lance, the giant killer, and the before mentioned broadsword. But the thing is though, it's hard to call those broadsword builds or symmetrical lance builds. In the future, if I ever did that, I would just call them an ice shard build, because honestly that's what it is. I'm to the point where I know that ice shards is a very very powerful item, but I'm to the point where I'm just refusing to run it anymore, because it's just so overpowered. So unless ice shards gets reworked sometime in the future, I'm just not gonna run it in any of my showcase runs. But uh, what do you guys think about ice shards? I think it's just beyond busted right now, especially with kill rhythm. There has been talk of reworking it. I know I discussed this with some other people in the Discord server, 
but I quite like the idea of Ice Shards not doing any damage at all, so all it does is that it slows down enemies. I talked about this with some other people, and we would all agree if that was the condition, we would still run Ice Shards, because it's just so overpowered. But then again, none of us are game designers or developers, we don't really know how to balance games. So what do you think? Do you think Ice Shards can actually work if it just did no damage and all it did was slow down the enemies? One other suggestion was that you kind of make it have a charge up animation, kind of like the Frost Blast that you'll see in a second. Um, as you notice, I am running Frost Blast, which is not something that I do very often. I just think it really fits better into the theme of the slow nature of Rhythm and Bazooki. And because of the AoE effect, I thought that Frost Blast would fit it better than the Ice Bow. But uh, speaking of the Ice Shards earlier, the other rework suggestion was to make it so that it has a charge up animation. Kind of like the Frost Blast. Because if that was the case, then nobody would dual bonnie anymore. And really the only reason you will run it is if it actually did damage and your goal is to slow down the enemy. It's not just another convenient filler item that you can dual bind because it has a very very fast swing speed. Because I honestly don't think this is healthy for the game. Ice Shards has been broken for like over a year now. And although they've nerfed it, um, I believe, namely its damage at some point, it's just too overpowered right now. And it's not something to do with its damage, it's something to do with its core design. Which I think is hindering the game, namely survival builds, to be very diverse. But then again, this is just one man's thoughts and opinions. Maybe I just have a personal grudge with Ice Shards. But anyways, moving onwards to the cavern, I haven't taken a single health charge yet. So that is a very, very welcoming surprise. Usually with survival builds, I do very poorly. Um, I've said this sometime in the past, but I have the lowest win rate on survival. And another thing why I like this weapon so much is because of the learning potential. Because you do have to get used to the rhythm to actually pull off the combo. When I first got my hands on this weapon, I kind of just sat in a transition area and then just tested out the rhythm it's going. I believe the exact rhythm of it follows the beat of a 98 BPM track, though don't quote me on this, I know nothing about music. I believe I messed with Fruity Loops at some point, but I just could not get the hang of making music. Um, it's just way too complex for my college brain. But as you can see, I'm actually putting a shield inside my backpack because I will be switching it out for the Frost Blast once we go into a boss fight. The reason for this is, let's be honest here, Frost Blast is not going to do anything in boss fights considering that bosses really don't like to be frozen. And I think that's one of the reasons why Freeze is just not a very viable mechanic. The only freezing item that actually works well in bosses is Ice Armor because it's actually defensive and can actually save you from a tricky situation, which I actually have here. I do plan on doing a compilation video of purely Ice Armor plays, because you're gonna see a bunch of them in this run as well as the runs I have featured in the past, but Ice Armor is actually becoming one of my favorite items in the game right now. Going into the giant fight, and you see I don't even have to jump up because the radius of Rhythm and Bazooki is just so massive. Um, I believe the only reason it didn't do more damage there is because Giant has the boss damage cap, and that's one of the reasons why survival builds just don't work too well against bosses compared to brutality and tactics. And uh, one more hit here, I'm gonna activate Ice Armor and you see there it took the hit for me. That's gotta be a 200 IQ play. There we go with the fight, no hit the giant as well. Well, technically no hit if you count the Ice Armor. But I'm lazy, I'm just gonna skip High Peak Castle and move on to the Hand of the King. Speaking of skipping High Peak Castle, Another suggestion that I put out on the Discord server is that I want Scarecrow to drop 5 scroll fragments. Because at the moment, Timekeeper drops 3, Giant drops 4, however, he also gives you the option to just skip to Hand of the King, which is just very, very huge. And then Scarecrow right now drops only 3, which is kind of disappointing. So I really think that in the Scarecrow fight, um, I've been there a couple of times. I definitely think it's the most frantic boss fight out of the three. You have the least window to hit boss, and it's probably the boss fight where you're most likely to take damage. And just dropping three scroll fragments on 4 to 5 BC is just kind of sad. And I just don't see a lot of reason to go there. So I think making it so that Scarecrow drops five scroll fragments will really incentivize players to actually go there. 
so I think that might be a welcoming change. I should probably mention that the ice grenade doesn't really work too well. In boss fights, I've said this before, freeze just isn't very viable in boss fights. But I guess this is one of those scenarios where the backpack has a different function now that they've updated it. As you can see, I'm just using the spike shield now because I put the frost blast inside my backpack. Considering it's not gonna do anything in this fight, but I'm gonna parry some attacks. But of course, gonna get hit one more time with chip damage, and just like that, Hand of the King is down as well. Now unfortunately, that was not a no-hit, so... Really gotta brush out my skills, especially survival. Sometimes I'm just getting too greedy to sneak in some attacks, and I think being too greedy in this game will end up punishing me. But anyways, moving right along, we still have 72% health, and have not taken a single health flask. So let's see how well I can fare in the Astro Lab. But as you can see here, I just swapped out my Spike Shield with Frost Blast once again, because I definitely think it's more interesting to use in biomes. I really want to see Freeze becoming a more viable mechanic, but ever since the release of Dead Cells, it's just kind of not very good, uh, because it's really only viable in biomes. It's just hard to see how Freeze will work in bosses, considering that if you freeze the boss, it's basically just free hits. And it's understandable why that's not a thing. But moving right along in the Astro Lab, haven't taken a single instance of damage yet, um, though that will eventually change as you see there. 31 stats in survival. Now by personal experience, the average amount of scroll stats I have in the end of the game is 32. So this is a little bit below average, but honestly it's fine. I've said this in my 4 BC tips guide, but as long as you have over 30, you're fine. You should be fine at 4 slash 5 BC, because interestingly enough, they give the exact amount of scroll fragments. But I'm gonna go in, get the second key from the Elite Slammer. Um, I got some questions asking that the traps in the Astrolab is killing a lot of uh, first timers here. And the only tip I can give to that is using the Masochist mutation because the lasers, as well as the lava, do count as trap damage. And I think it's particularly useful if you go for the Sonic Carbine Blueprint because that requires you to go into a really difficult jumping puzzle. And I think Masochist will really help you out there if you're struggling to get the Blueprint. But don't be too disappointed if you die the first couple of times. Um, I did die the first couple of times when I went to the Astrolab, but if you've already made it this far, then it's pretty impressive. You are probably already in the top 5% of players. But uh, here I'm just get doing some really interesting Ice Armor plays as you saw there. Ice Armor just such a really interesting defensive option. It's unlike anything I've seen before. So after this video, I just have one more item showcase and that is the Valmont's Whip. So this video and the next will be the last of runs that I will do in version 2.2 of the game. Because as you can tell from the malaise message, the run that I'm playing right now was played on version 2.2. Though since they didn't change anything about 5BC in 2.2 and 2.3, it shouldn't really matter. But I'm going to show off my final build and move on to the collector boss fight. Now I'm going to have to warn you guys, this is one of the longer fights that I had. And I think part of the reason is because I forgot to switch out Ice Grenade for pretty much anything else, considering that the Ice Grenade just doesn't do too much. But of course I still have the Spike Shield, so I definitely think it's better than the Frost Blast. But um, you really have to time those parries well. I think a lot of the collector's attacks are pretty easy to be parried, it's just that you're already so far into the game that you really don't want to mess up. But here, as you can see, I did another Ice Armor play, so I got the bubble in the last second, and that negated a single instance of damage. But uh, as you can see here, because I'm playing survival, naturally I'm not gonna do too much damage. And this is partly because of the boss damage cap. But finally, I'm gonna get the Collector to do the first heal. Though I'm already been teleported into the enemy room, so this is not a very good position to be. Now you might be thinking, well if the fight's taking so long, then why is the Rhythm of Bazooki in S tier? Well the thing is, that's just kind of the nature of survival builds, because you can't really expect them to do a lot of damage, considering that the boss damage cap does not move. I've had some ideas, where like, if you're playing survival, and you get more scrolls, the idea is that it negates more of the boss damage cap the more scrolls you have. 
And obviously, don't get rid of the boss cap completely because that would just be busted and you would be one-shotting bosses. I'm sure if you notice on the tooltip, you'll see that survival weapons do a lot more DPS. But the thing is though, it's kind of misleading, especially for newer players, because DPS doesn't mean anything by itself. Um, you really shouldn't be comparing DPS on item tooltips, because that doesn't tell you too much about the weapon. If you look at the big club, the toothpick, it actually does the most amount of DPS out of any weapon I've seen in the game. But I think it's one of the worst weapons in the game, because the attack is just too slow. And if I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I really hope I don't see any more slow weapons going into the future of Dead Cells, because I just don't think they're very viable. But luckily, we are entering the end of the fight, just gotta get Collector to heal one more time, but this is gonna be very tricky because I barely have any time to sneak in attacks because there is always a cooldown with the Rhythm and Bazooki. It's not a weapon you can spam like a lot of others, which again, I think it has a very interesting playstyle because of this, in the sense that you can't just spam it. One other weapon I want to try out is the Cocoon. Now, with the Cocoon, you can actually parry some enemy attacks that you normally cannot, such as light beam attacks by the librarian or the collector as you're seeing right now. But anyways, there was the run. Collector is down and we just beat the game with the Rhythm and Bazooki. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and gave you some incentive to try out this weapon for yourself. I definitely think the Bad Sea DLC introduced a bunch of really interesting weapons, especially the Scythe Claws, which I will also be taking a look at. I know I've been getting a lot of requests to do a Scythe Claw run, but don't worry, it will be coming out soon. But there was the run for today, hopefully you've enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.